What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel for Webflow Pros. In today's video, I'm going to show you a cleaner way to create interactions inside of Webflow. So this is the design we'll be working off of. It's inspired by this nice piece of work by Design Sense. It was posted in the Webflow Designers Facebook group and someone asked, is there a way to create this inside of Webflow? The answer is yes. So anytime we click on an odd dot, we want the circles to move left and right. If we click on an even dot, we want the circles to move up and down. And if we, whenever we click on a dot, we want the image to sort of scale into place and show a little bit of paragraph text inside of there. Pretty simple to do even with Webflow interactions, but I'm gonna show you a way that's gonna be a little bit uh, easier to adjust, especially on mobile. So the first thing we need to understand is that we can actually create interactions by adding removing classes inside of Webflow. So for instance, if I were to come behind this class and create a class of X move, and then maybe I just adjust the position right here um, using EMs for instance, and let's just kind of put it right there, okay? Now, if I were to add a CSS transition to the base class um, and come back to the main one, now whenever I add this class, you'll notice it slides into place instead of snapping. When I remove that class, it slides back to where it started. So we don't even have to create two separate interactions. We can just add and remove classes and then it will return everything back to the way it was. Um, since this has the same hero class, the same base class as this one, but it has a combo class, I can add another class of X move. And since this isn't a global class, but it's specific to this one element, I can change this, use the same class to make this go in a completely different direction. Maybe we do, I don't know, um, four or five, let's see. Maybe we'll go all the way up to 11 EMs, perfect. And then when I remove this class, it slides it back and that seems to be doing the trick. So anytime we click on any one of these dots, which they all have a base class of bike dots, we want to add a class to both of these circles of X move and that class will do something totally different. Um, so I created this week a jQuery builder where you can basically use this UI uh, to let it write your own jQuery. So there's a bunch of actions we can do, but we'll do on click for this one and we'll target the class of bike dots. So anytime we click on any one of the bike dots, we need to grab something. And the thing we want to get is actually the hero circles. So I'll go ahead and paste that in. So it's going to grab both of the hero circles and there's a bunch of things we can do with them. We can add a class to them, remove a class, uh, whatever, but I'll use the toggle class. So that way the first time we click, it adds the class and the second time it removes that same class. The class we want to add and remove is the class of X move. So now it should just toggle that on and off anytime we click on any of the bike dots. Um, let's go ahead and copy this script and let's test it out. So we'll come over here and we'll paste all this code inside our closing body tag inside our Webflow project, save and publish. And then let's test it out on the live page um, right now. So if I click on any one of these dots, what you'll notice it added that class. If I click it again, it removes that class of X move from both of those. And this works even if I click on this one and then click on a separate dot, it always knows where it left off and it can toggle them on and off. So that's a really cool part of this too. Um, so then from there, we know that anytime we click on any one of the odd ones, we want to move the circles left and right. If we click on an even one, we want to move the circles up and down. So let me go back to this base class of hero circle we follow the same process basically. So let me remove that transition so it's easier to move. Um, I'll create a class of Y move. And this is specific to this one element. I can use that class um, basically to move this using EMs, um, which actually I probably need it to adjust it from this side since it's anchored to the top. Perfect, and I'll just use that to move it down. Um, so that's my Y move. I'll apply another class of Y move and then I'll use this one to basically move that circle up. Awesome. And then let's go ahead and add this transition back in. So in here, really, we will only want the first, uh, third, and fifth dot to add this class of X move. So all these dots have combo classes, even though they have the same base class, they have a combo class of is one, two, three, four, all the way up until five. So we can say this, one click, we'll only grab one click of the first dot, we'll add this class. If we wanna add multiple dots in here, um, we can use a comma, a space, a period, and then type another class name 
Um, so in this case, we'll do is three. And then let's do that again, comma, space, a period, and then we'll add is five. So anytime we click on the first, third, or fifth dot, it's always gonna basically toggle this class. So let me go ahead and copy that code and basically come back over here into my custom code, paste all that in. And this is for clicking on um, the odd dots. So I'll go ahead and add a comma and comment so it's easy to keep track of. Um, odd dots, perfect. Now let me just copy this whole block of code again and I'm gonna paste it underneath and I'll call this one even dots. Um, awesome. And from here, we wanna say anytime we click on the second or the fourth dot, and then I'll just delete the fifth uh, one here. And the class we wanna toggle instead of X move is Y move. Um, so let's go ahead and save that and test it out. So I'll save and publish. Let's go back to the site and let's try it okay i click on this dot perfect it slides them this way i click on the second one slides them that way awesome so i can toggle this on and off and depending on which dot i click on that depends on whether or not it's toggling that same class um that's working perfectly the next thing we want to do is anytime we click on any one of these dots we want to hide all of the sibling dots next to it so you'll notice they all have the same class of byte dots even though they have that combo class of is second and third and so forth. So anytime we click on any one of the byte dots, we want to grab all of the siblings with the class of byte dot and set them to hide. So to hide them, we will actually create a class. Um, let me remove this is three for a second so I can create a class that will apply to all of them. I'll just call it hide dot um, and turn the opacity down, perfect. And then let me remove that class and add is three back on. Okay, so basically, let's go back to our code, and we can add, using the same interaction, we can basically add a new one, and what we want to do here is we'll use the trigger element, um, which is the one we clicked on, and the one we'll click on is anytime we click on any one of the bike dots, um, so actually I don't need this, I'll remove that, um, anytime we click on any one of the bike dots, we want to get the siblings with the same class, bike dot, and then we want to toggle a class on them that is, I believe we called it hide dot inside of Webflow. So let me go ahead and just copy all this. We call it hide dot, I think we did. Yeah, we did, awesome. All right, so let me go ahead and paste this inside our code. And we're gonna just call this uh, hide uh, siblings. And we'll paste in our code here. Awesome, and then from there, it's basically just, should just hide all the siblings whenever we click on one of the bike dots. Um, let's go ahead and test it out. So I'm going to publish and refresh. Yep, and it's hiding all the siblings the first time I click. And then the second time I click, it's showing them again. Um, that's working perfect. Then we want to actually um, get some paragraph text that's inside each one of the byte dots. So inside of these dots, there's a child somewhere buried deep in here um, called byte P, which is the paragraph text. I'll create a combo class called show P and we'll basically use that to turn the opacity up and to basically move this back up so that way it slides and I remove this class of show P it slides down add the class it slides up and fades up so that's perfect so what I want to do anytime I click on any one of the bike dots is get a child inside with a class of paragraph and basically add that class of show P so let me copy that class and go back to our writer. Um, we'll add in a new one and then this time instead of getting the siblings we'll get a child um, with the class of byte p and then we want to toggle the class of show p. Okay and so now this whole interaction we can go ahead and copy. I'll bring back into my Webflow project right here and then I guess this is no longer just hiding the siblings but um, we'll just call it main dot interaction. All right, so let's go ahead and test this out and see if it works. So this way it's not showing all the paragraphs. Um, it's only showing the one inside of the one we clicked on. So let me go ahead and try that. Yes, perfect. And it's toggling it on and off. So we're seeing it slide up and down. That's awesome. Last thing we want to do is basically scale up the image to the position it needs to be in. 
So I added a bunch of these classes like position one that we can add to the bike image to slide it into place. It's just scaling it up and it's adding a bit of transform to move it. Um, position two would slide this one here. So this one we're gonna have to kind of take one by one. So all these dots remember have combo classes. This one says is one, so that's the first one. So let's create an interaction. I'll just refresh this to get a clean start. We're gonna say on click of is one, what do we want to get? Uh, the thing we want to get is the bike image. There's only one of these on the page. Um, so we want to get the bike image, perfect. And we want to toggle a class of position, let me spell it right, position one. And that should basically just scale that bike image up whenever we click on it, um, whenever we click on the corresponding dot. So let me go ahead and paste this in and I'll call this, um, We'll call it position one and paste this in. So one click of one, we'll add that class of uh, bike one. Oops, did not mean to print. And let's go back and let's uh, paste this again and we'll create one for position two. And we'll say one cl click of is two, uh, add that class of position two to the bike image. And we can do that for each one of the positions, but let's go ahead and save and publish and test it out. So now I refresh, click on this one. Yep, it scales into place. Click on that one, it scales into place. Awesome, so the best thing about this whole setup is that when it comes to mobile and maybe some stuff gets moved around and we need to change kind of where everything's falling, um, what we can do, let me just disable this transition for a second, add in position one, I can readjust it. So if I want this to maybe move uh, down a little bit and realign it back into place where it needs to be. I can do the same thing for position two. So I'll just change this ever so slightly to get this to line up again. And we're not having to create a whole new interaction. It's just going to add that same class of position one, position two, so on and so forth. Um, and we're just able to adjust it for each one of the breakpoints if we need to move it just a little bit of a distance. Um, so let's say this one right here is one. Let me disable that move for a second so I can move it clearly. So like the X move, if maybe this text uh, got a little closer together or I want to move it to a different position on the X or for the Y, maybe we want to adjust this um, kind of ever so slightly to where it bring it in a little closer. We can make all those tweaks using these classes and not have to create new interactions. Um, let me go back to the base one and add this transition back in and I'll add that combo back in. Awesome. Um, so that's one of the great things about working with this sort of adding and removing classes. It makes the site a little bit faster because it's not relying so heavily on JavaScript. Most of the animation is actually being done with CSS. And it also gives you access to a lot of the things that Webflow Interactions maybe wouldn't give you access to. Like if you want it to animate a uh, border width or something like that, or um, maybe transform from a certain, transform from a certain uh, corner. Uh, right here, a lot of that you don't have access to with Webflow Interactions, but you can by just adding removing classes that have these different settings. Um, but there's another part of this, and that's basically where Webflow Interactions, some things that you actually can't do with Webflow Interactions, that this method would be really helpful for. And the first thing is maybe on click of this button uh, of the accordion, we want to show the corresponding paragraph text. So it might start off with a defined height, like maybe 11 EM or something. And that's pretty condensed. And we just basically we want to set the height to auto so it expands out. Um, we can't actually do that right now because when click of this button, um, it's not a direct sibling with the paragraph text. So the button's inside a container called FAQ left. And this one's in a container called FAQ right. So we can't actually say on click of this button, grab the sibling, which is the paragraph text inside FAQ right because they're both wrapped inside two separate uh, containers. So what we can do if we did want to use Webflow Interactions is just drag a div inside of this FAQ right. And I'll give it a little bit of a height so you can see it and basically make that sort of our trigger. So we can do an on click of this FAQ right, open the accordion on first click of the uh, trigger and then close the accordion on second click of that trigger. Um, and then what we need to do is basically anytime the user clicks on the button, kind of cause their device to click on this trigger for us. So that way clicking on this will result in this being opened. 
and we can still use Webflow Interactions if we want it to, um, to basically uh, animate this because this is a direct sibling of the paragraph. Um, so let's go ahead and set the height to zero for a second. Um, so the first thing we know is we're gonna start by the user clicking on this button. So I'm gonna copy the class of that button and on click a button, um, what are we looking for? So right now it's, like I said, wrapped inside something called FAQ left. So what we can do is go ahead and get FAQ left, which is its parent. Um, so from here, we'll just say, we'll use the trigger element. So the one we clicked on. Uh, so if they click on the first button on the page or the second, it'll just know which one they clicked on. And then it'll get the parent of that button called FAQ left. And this can go up multiple levels too. Like if we want it to get something even higher than the direct parent, which in Webflow, you're limited to the exact parent that's directly above this item. Um, but let's go ahead and say, once we have that parent, what do we wanna do? Let's get the sibling of that parent, which is the FAQ right. So I can copy that class, go back over here and get the sibling. And then once we have that sibling, once we have the FAQ right that belongs with the button the user clicked on, we wanna search inside of it to find a child um, which is called FAQ trigger. So this child right here. Um, and then once we have that child, what do we wanna do with it? We basically just want to click on it. So that way it causes our Webflow interaction to trigger. So we're basically using this string that says anytime the user clicks on any one of these buttons on the page, get the parent of that button called FAQ left. Then find the sibling of FAQ left, which is FAQ right. Then find the child inside of FAQ right which is the FAQ trigger, um, and then just click on that trigger. Now we could do this in even less steps actually because we can go multiple parents up. So we can say on click of the button, instead of grabbing its direct parent, which is FAQ right, grab the FAQ item, so the whole item. So we'll make that our parent instead. And then search inside of that item, inside of that entire item for a child and that child we're looking for, let's see, is called FAQ trigger. So we already have that here. So then we just don't need the middle step. And if you wanna move this, this is fine. Um, the order is really important though, because if the child were to come first, it's gonna look for something inside of the button we clicked on called FAQ trigger. And then it's gonna look for the parent of the thing inside that button. So we need to make sure we find the parent first and then we get the child inside that parent. So it needs to go in that order. Um, let's go ahead and just copy all this and let's test it out. So we'll come back over here into our custom code. And then in here, I'm just gonna create a new one for, or I'll call it FAQ. Um, let's do FAQ and then let's paste in our custom code and let's publish and test it out. So I refresh the page and scroll down. Now I'll click on any one of these buttons and the corresponding um, FAQ text opens up. I click on it again and it closes. So that's working just fine there. And then I can do that with any one of these. Awesome, it's opening and it's closing. It's just clicking on that trigger for us. So that's how to create interactions in Webflow with the new jQuery Builder by adding and removing classes. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, hit that subscribe button below. If you're interested in more advanced jQuery lessons, check out the Patreon page where I've added a few lessons. And we also opened up a exclusive Slack channel for the Webflow wizards uh, to talk about web design in general and show off some of our projects. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I'll catch you in the next video. Goodbye.